everyone here. I'm honoured uh, to be here tonight, honoured to be back in Waltham Forest, honoured to be back amongst people who it's right to say make me proud to be a Londoner and make me proud to be a UK citizen. Here in this hall, we have lords, we have members of parliament, we have councillors, council leaders, mayors, representatives of international communities, 60 councillors. Above all, we have citizens. The hardest job in the world, Abraham Lincoln said, is to be a citizen. And so to each and every one of you, I want to say thank you for what you do in this borough or in other boroughs in London to send out a very, very clear and very, very simple message. We prosper together, we work together, we're stronger in our diversity, and we will defend to the end the vision of a multi-faith, multicultural, open society that says to anyone, we judge you, not by the color of your skin, not by the religion that you worship, we judge you by the content of your character and the commitment to this country. So thank you for what you do. We're here for a celebration, but we're here with our thoughts on tragedy. Terrible tragedy. Tragedy that is born by literally brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. People in this room with relatives amongst the currently 14 million, predicted to rise to 20 million, Pakistanis affected by those murderous, appalling tragedies that are striking all across Pakistan. And our thoughts are brought to the surface by the pictures, by the immediate news coverage. And it's right that we respond to disasters and to emergencies. We are friends of Pakistan today. We're friends of the Pakistani people today. But we pledge that we will be friends of the Pakistani people tomorrow, the day after, and the day after that, as long as it takes to build a decent society in Pakistan. We stand shoulder to shoulder with all 175 million of those people, entrepreneurial people, brave people, people who have suffered from terrorism. Let's remember the thousands of Pakistani civilians who have suffered ter from terrorism in that country. We do not look both ways. We look one way to Pakistan. We say we are your friend, we stand with you. And we want to make sure that Pakistan is part of a stable South Asia. We know. We know there is no stability in Pakistan when there is instability in Afghanistan. We know that stability is, spreads just as instability can spread. And we call on all the countries of South Asia to be part of stability in that region, that region that is so important to us here in this country. And Pakistan needs friends for its economy. It needs friends for its security. It needs friends for its trade, and it needs friends for its democracy. Because we all know in this room, the 63 years that many of the speakers have talked about, 31 of those years, Pakistan has not been ruled by civilians, it's been ruled by the military. And we know that the future of Pakistan lies with its people, from the people, for the people, by the people. A Pakistan that does reflect the true interests of all of its people. And one of my proudest moments as Foreign Secretary, when I went to Islamabad after February 2008, and I sat between representatives of all the parties, and all of them said, Pakistan would not have returned to democracy if it hadn't been, not just for a Labour government, but if it hadn't been for the British people as well. And the struggle of the Pakistani people for democracy is our struggle too. And we pledge to them that we support them not just to become a democracy again, but to remain one and to be one which serves all of its people. Let me say this too, because this is an international gathering, an international community, but it's also a very local one. And when I think about what I want the future of the Labour Party to be, I do think about what Chris Robbins is leading in Waltham Forest. I do think about his commitment to make sure that every community of Waltham Forest doesn't have, just have confidence in the services of Waltham Forest, but also has power to help shape those services. And the fact that we have representatives of the police force here, 
A police force which serves every part of the community, works closely with the community and with all partners of the community, is testimony to that commitment to put the power of the people behind our public services. When I see what he has done and what his council is leading in support for small business, I know that no one can say that the Labour Party isn't the party that supports wealth creation. And those of you who are small businessmen and women in this hall, thank you for what you do to build prosperity in our country. And I also know when I see Chris and his colleagues' commitments to bring out the best in our young people, to fight against inequality of life chances, to make sure that we give the best education so that we get the best out of our young people, I know that they are people and that they are representatives of a party that has its eye on the future, not just on the past. Power, wealth, opportunity in the hands not of the few but the many. For those of us in the Labour Party, it says it on our party card. And I want to be a leader of the Labour Party who doesn't just write a constitution for the party, I actually want to see it delivered. And if we follow the Walthamstow example, we will do that. The Labour Party that I believe in, the Labour Party that I believe in does judge the condition of a community by the position of the weak and not just the strong. The Labour Party that I believe in does see community as something based on responsibilities as well as rights. And the Labour Party that I believe in stands shoulder to shoulder with people all around the world whose names we may not know, whose stories we can only imagine, but who are fellow members of humanity and to whom we owe duties and obligations. Those commitments go to the core of who we are, not as politicians, but as people. And that, it seems to me, defines the change that Britain needs today. The change that Britain needs is not to pull the rug from under our small business people, it's actually to support them. The change that Britain needs is not to disorganise the National Health Service, it's actually to build up the National Health Service. The change that Britain needs is not to cancel the Building Schools for the Future programme in Waltham Forest, it's actually to invest in the future of our young people. And our uh, young representative, the future uh, representative of uh, Waltham Forest, who spoke so well for the young people of Waltham Forest, he spoke well too about what Ramadan says, not just to Muslims, but to those of us who are not Muslims. If I understand it correctly, Ramadan speaks to charity, Ramadan speaks to contemplation, Ramadan speaks to justice. And the rivers of justice don't know bounds of religion, or race, or colour. And it seems to me that today is a day where we recognise the suffering of people far away in Pakistan. It's a day when we celebrate the achievements of our own community. But it's also the day when we say that the message of Ramadan, its commitment to justice and contemplation and to charity, is a message not just for Muslims but for all of us. And it's for that reason that I'm honoured to be here today. It's for that reason that I honour you and your contribution to this community. And it's why I honour my public service to be on your side as you fight your struggles in the future. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, David. The clock is ticking every second goes by. You should think of your life the time you will die. What if you die? What will you say? Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. I did not think I would die today. But the end is nigh, then it will be too late. Man could have had heaven, but he's going to choose his own fate. I know you are sincere. I would like to see you persevere. But isn't it a shame? Who is to blame? Our sisters and brothers are dying while we stand back and watch their crying. 